So this is an AC to AC variable transformer, more commonly known as a variac, but that is just a brand name and not the actual name of what this is. And this is a DC treadmill motor. I've already done a video showing you how to use a bridge rectifier and a variable transformer to power a treadmill motor. But in that video, I never showed you how to hook up blue wires. I ended up getting a comment from a viewer saying, hey, I would love it if you would put together a video showing how to use a Variac to power a treadmill motor and hook up the blue wires. Greetings fellow DIYer and welcome to my video. When I first received that comment, I was thinking through the process and exactly what needed to happen. And I actually told the viewer that it would be best to modify an extension cord to put the blue wire connection between this plug and the wall. And the reason I told them that is the blue wires are nothing more than a safety switch. If this motor gets too hot, there is a thermal circuit breaker inside the motor that will cut power to the power supply. And so when you wire blue wires on an MC2100 or other power supplies, you always put it at the power going into the motor control board. So initially, it made more sense to me to have the power cut between the wall and this plug. But here's the problem. In order to hook up blue wires, you have to plug them into something. And in order to have an extension cord that has two terminals that you'd plug those blue wires into, you run the risk of plugging in that extension cord and having AC voltage that is not properly insulated. In other words, if you did not hook up the blue wires, and you plugged that cord in, someone could get hurt. Anytime you're doing electronics like this, you do that at your own risk and you need to be super careful. So I just wanna say that even though it makes the most sense to put it between the wall and this plug for the sake of cutting power to the entire variable transformer, it does not make sense as far as safety. Really, you want those blue wires going into an enclosure where you're keeping your bridge rectifier so that there's no chance of anyone getting shocked. If we don't end up putting them here, where do we end up putting them? Well, the blue wires always have to go on the AC side of the circuit. There's a lot of reasons for that. It has to do with amperage load and any number of things, but the important thing that you, the viewer, need to know is you cannot use the blue wires in line with the black, and red DC wires coming out of any of these power supplies. You're gonna create all kinds of problems and likely end up smoking something. Blue wires always wired on the AC side. So let's take a look at how this is wired up and I will show you exactly what you do to wire in those blue wires. So this is a bridge rectifier on a heat sink with an extension cord wired to it. And if you are familiar at all with my channel, you know that I am constantly telling people not to use this bridge rectifier. In fact, a video that I just recently did goes into great detail on why you should not use this type of bridge rectifier and why you should not use the inferior AC to AC voltage controller. So if I'm constantly telling you not to use this, why would I be using it for demonstration purposes? Well, the reality of it is I'm using it for demonstration purposes. This rectifier is a decent component and it can be made to work in some situations. This motor has no load on it. We're not spinning a belt. We're not spinning any equipment. And so the demands on this bridge rectifier are going to be way, way less. So because the demands of this motor are going to be way less, I choose to use this bridge rectifier in my demonstrations because it's easy to hook up. 
These are very simple spade terminals that I can easily plug into. This big guy requires actually being soldered on and a better connection. And so for demonstration purposes only, no load on the motor, this bridge rectifier is sufficient, but I never recommend using it for your actual install. And here's the other thing. Heat is the biggest thing that kills bridge rectifiers. And even though I am using this for demonstration purposes, I still have this connected to a very stout heat sink to help keep it cool. So the first thing we need to know is how do you hook up this Variac to a DC motor through a bridge rectifier? And once I've shown you that, we will actually come back and reconfigure it for the blue wires. It's really pretty simple. On this particular bridge rectifier, you have two AC inputs, this guy and this guy over here. And then you have a positive here and your negative here. Now, normally, if you're wiring any of this kind of stuff to, let's say you're putting it on a lathe, you always want to ground out everything. You want to run this directly to the body of said lathe so that a circuit breaker will trip if any situation comes where a wire is cut through or the insulation is no longer there. So we basically take and plug the black one in here because it's the negative. We plug the positive one in here. We then and only then plug the Variac in, even though it has an on off switch. I still never do any wiring when the unit is plugged in. So with the Variac plugged in, we are now going to plug in this cord that I wired to the bridge rectifier and turn on the switch. We begin to turn the knob and right away, you can see that this motor is spinning. And this is probably one of the nicest things about using a Variac or See here, I'm even using the name Variac. Really, this is an AC variable transformer. Variac is just a brand name like Ziploc. Everyone refers to those resealable bags as Ziplocs, but only the ones with the Ziploc branding on them are truly Ziplocs. But see how slow that's moving? That is probably the biggest single advantage to a variable transformer like this. I'm gonna turn it off and I'm gonna unplug it again. And now we're gonna look at the blue wires. And the blue wires are super, super simple. We have the AC coming into the rectifier right here. I'm gonna unplug that. My blue wires have two spades, one that is female and one that is male. I'm now gonna plug the male plug into the wire from the variable transformer so that electricity is now going to flow through the switch inside the motor. And that same electricity, once it has gone through the thermal circuit breaker, is now going to go into the rectifier. And that's it. That's all that has to happen to wire it up. We plug it in, we turn it on, we turn it up, and you can see that it is running just as it did before. Now it's turning a little faster, but that's only because I have it turned up at a higher voltage. If I take it down to a lower voltage, we are going to be turning much, much slower. That's everything you need to know to be able to hook up the blue wires on a variable transformer. A couple of things to note when using a variable transformer, there is no isolation between the voltage coming in and your circuit. Whereas a regular transformer, you actually have a separation between the two. That is something that could be of concern, but in most cases, this still works fairly well. Again, if you're doing any of this at home, you are doing it at your own risk. And the last thing that I wanna mention is if your motor comes with blue wires, it's probably a lower quality motor. And depending on the application, you may wanna consider getting yourself a better motor. And the reason for that is typically, not always, but typically motors with blue wires are not as robust. They don't have the torque and they're designed to run at super high RPMs. 
And so because of those two things, it is very easy for them to get overheated. And so the blue wires are there not as an extra feature, but as a safety feature to keep you from burning up the motor. So depending on what that motor is going in, just keep in mind that if your motor has blue wires, it's probably not as good. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to put them down in the comments. This video was created specifically because someone had the question, how do you hook up the blue wires with a variable transformer? And so here it is, the video showing you exactly how to do that. If you like what you've seen, please click like. If you'd like to see more, please subscribe. Thanks for watching.